All right, so you guys are in for a real treat. Uh, due to some AV stuff, uh, I'm gonna just do this cold without slides. And I'm also gonna make sure that we do as much Q&A as possible, because I think that's gonna be the most helpful thing for everybody. So I'm gonna just get going any second here. They can't hear me? Do I need to be louder like this or louder than this? Like, do I need to project more or what are we doing? Can you guys hear me? This good? Because I don't want to yell. So I'm just talking my outside voice and I think we'll be okay. Is that good? All right, awesome. Thumbs up? All right. So hey everybody, my name is uh, Roberto Blake and we're gonna be talking about how to grow on YouTube and get exposure in a noisy world. Now, real quickly, before we do anything, I do wanna thank you guys for coming out because you could've been doing anything today. You could've been spending time with your families, uh, you could've been working on your business, but instead you decided to be here with me and to learn and grow. So first of all, just clap it up for yourselves. All right, don't get a big head. <laughs> which is easy to do with uh, YouTube stuff. So uh, just a little quick background on me. About roughly three years ago, after um, a long career in creative services, design and advertising, I decided to start sharing my knowledge and my expertise on YouTube and I had no expectations that anybody was gonna watch. I just wanted to help creative people like me have it easier because there were a lot of things I wish I had known 10 years earlier in my career. Also, I wanted to give a little bit of advice for just coping with working in the design world, working in advertising because Sometimes uh, you work in a job and your experience sucks and it's not great and you have to like figure out how you're going to do this thing that you love every day with people you don't necessarily love as much as you love the work. And so weirdly that caught on three years later, 140,000 subscribers in YouTube, over 8 million views on the channel and over 800 videos produced just sharing what I know. And it's amazing, it's tremendous, it's allowed me to do public speaking and meet great people like all of you. And it's also grown my business and my marketing consultancy. And I think it's very practical. And one of the best things is every single person here is already a subject matter expert. Now let me ask you guys something. How many of you have watched a YouTube video in the last 72 hours? Raise your hand real quick. Let's get them up there high. Oh, look at that. Everybody look around real quick at those hands, keep them raised. Look at that, just about every single person in this room has watched a YouTube video in the last 72 hours. And do you know why? Because video is everywhere. Video is everywhere and it's very practical. Growing up, one of the things that I learned the most from was watching videos, whether it was stuff on PBS or my mom brought me this great program called Video Smarts. I don't know if any of you guys remember that from the 80s, but it was a really fantastic learning tool. And so I think that if you guys utilize the audience that you already have, and you use the expertise that you already have, whether it's as a parent, whether it's as a career professional, that this is something that becomes very practical for you and lets you reach a broader audience because YouTube is not only the second biggest search engine in the world versus its parent company, Google, the first largest search engine in the world, which by the way, really good growth hack for Google and for getting your blog to rank higher, YouTube videos of the same subject of the same topic posted in your blog and also linking back to it yeah, that works, because Google is mama. <laughs> Google, YouTube itself, the third largest trafficked website in the world. So with as practical as it is to be on YouTube, I know a lot of the fear and the concern is, well, isn't it saturated? Isn't somebody already talking about the same things that I want to talk about? Does anyone here have that concern or have that fear? Is it what's holding the far majority of you back from getting started? Well, I'm here to tell you that that doesn't really matter. For the first thing you need to know is you don't need a huge audience in YouTube to be successful. That's actually a myth. I've seen YouTubers with 17 subscribers rank on the first page for a topic that they're passionate about or that they know about right alongside people with a million subscribers. And that comes down to something you as bloggers know very well. Anyone got a guess as to what it is? SEO. SEO, titles, descriptions, and keywords, and relevancy. Something that as bloggers, you guys have a disproportionate advantage in. As a web designer and a graphic designer, guess what? That's exactly how I growth hacked my way to the top of YouTube in things that were very saturated. There were already a thousand guys out there doing Photoshop tutorials. There were already a thousand people talking about graphic design. You had lectures from professors at the top universities already out there and I still was able to rank at the top right alongside or even above a lot of these people and still do to this day. 
And it's all because I understood and took things that I knew as a web designer, as someone who mastered SEO, as someone who'd mastered blogging. I understood that, you know what? People really care about hearing an opinion from somebody that is educated in a thing or has experience with it. And sometimes they'll want an opinion from somebody else, someone they haven't heard before. They'll want to see if they're getting something different. They'll try out different things. It doesn't matter if 10 or 20 or 100 people have already talked about it. They're not you. They don't have your voice. They don't have your unique experiences. They don't have your background. You can bring something new to the table that other people have neglected to address or with your own style and your own flair. So don't think that it's too saturated for you to compete. You absolutely can compete and you can do it using the skills you already have. And by the way, the advantage you guys have over anybody else who's just getting started is you guys, most of you already have an audience. You already have an audience that would value and respect the information that you have. A lot of you already have authority in the thing that you talk about the most, which is more than the far majority of people who get started in this platform. The far majority of people who have been successful in this platform came out of nowhere and really, if we're gonna be painfully honest, didn't really have experience or expertise in anything, in anything. We're talking about a lot of the top people in this platform are under 20 and have been under 20 and the, the, their job experience consists of waiting tables or um, you know doing retail and there's nothing wrong with that. It just means that there is a huge advantage for you as people who have actually had professions and have experience and have time under your belt of actually going through things and experiencing things to share your experiences and your expertise. And you know why? Because people are looking for answers. People are looking for answers in this platform. You know what one of the most uh, highest ranking categories in YouTube really is today? It's the how-to category. Anyone here ever look up how to do something on YouTube? Oh, well look at that, the far majority of people. I know that like every, uh, every other week or so I look up how to tie a tie because I can never remember. That, no, that's very real to me. I think one of the most practical, long form, like uh, evergreen I should say, videos that you could do that's super short in five minutes is if one of you want to sit down with one of your kids and literally teach them how to tie their shoe or how to double tie their shoe, I literally think that that video would do very well and would probably be relevant forever. I honestly believe that and I honestly think that even if it's been done, it being your video and being done in your style and with your cute kid is going to make a difference. Believe that 110%. I've done videos that I know have been covered by people before. I've reviewed products that have been reviewed by people before, but I bring my own unique style and personality and attitude to the table, and I also bring my own sense of aesthetic, my own setup, my own lighting, my own, you know, create awesome t-shirts. Whatever you want to do, you can go ahead and do it and you can be creative. Creativity is one of the plus sides of YouTube is the fact that in a saturated market, You'll notice that a lot of people get cookie cutter. A lot of people get repetitive. A lot of people just like ride the coattails of what's already been successful. You have the opportunity to do something interesting and unique for people that are as crazy, stupid, excited about it as you. And it's also people going through your same experience in life. Is there anyone here that has um, an allergy or has a child with allergies? Anybody? Okay, we got a couple of hands. Do you realize how practical it is to do a video for people uh, whose children are going through the same thing that your child is or need uh, special meals prepared or need that extra little bit of preparation. If it was successful in written format, how much more powerful is it, is it in the form of video, something where people can experience your personality, experience what's infectious about you, and can actually see your depth of emotion, your commitment to this topic. So I really think all of those things matter and I'm gonna get into some practical things you can do. So let's talk about solving problems for your audience. I already talked about how how-to videos are extraordinarily practical and something you can do. But you can also demonstrate things. You can actually show instead of tell. When you write a blog article or a post, oh yeah, we uh, AV problems, so we don't have that. That's why I know all my stuff cold. <laughs> That's one of the other cool things um, about doing a live unedited video, because this is gonna go up on the YouTube channel anyway, is if you actually know what you're talking about, you never worry when there's a problem. <laughs> but something that you guys um, can really easily do is if, if you have something that you can demonstrate where you can show instead of tell, that's perfect for YouTube, that's perfect for a video audience and people will care about it. 
The other thing you can do is if there are questions that you get from your peers or from people in your community all the time, you could actually do Q&A videos that answer those 10 questions or those five questions. You can even ask people in your audience and you can do polls and you can share the information and share your thoughts on those results in a video and that's very practical. You can ask your community to say, hey, what should I cover next? Or what should I talk about? Or what's the biggest struggle that you're having right now in your family life? Or what's the struggle that you're having balancing family and career? You could ask these kinds of questions and they'd be very relevant to your audience and they can give you the ideas for new content because how many of you struggle with what content to create, whether it's video or articles or something else? How many of you actually like, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna write about today? Anybody? Okay, well crowdsourcing that information by asking questions of your audience and asking them, what do you want me to cover? What have I not addressed enough? What could I go deeper on? That actually is participatory content. That's gonna have more emotional impact with your audience because they were part of the situation. And the thing is, you can acknowledge and say, you know what, this was a great um, idea that I got from Victoria and I decided to cover it in a video. Or hey, this is something that I want to acknowledge that this community in Facebook is doing and I think you should be a part of it or I think this would be helpful for you. Why don't you check this out and then let's talk about it. You could do these things in video content and it's very meaningful. Or you can even just do discussion-based topics based on what might be relevant or what might be happening either in your own life or something you see that's happening that might affect uh, your community or your industry or people who are going through your particular situation. So I think all those things are practical content ideas for you to do in YouTube. But let's talk about the tactical part. Let's talk about breaking into YouTube search, uh, which I have a list of tools that I'm gonna read off to you guys, and this will be available in the slideshow that's gonna be uh, downloaded from the website, but I'll cover that in a minute. But I wanna get into some of the key things. You guys already know SEO. A lot of you are bloggers. You already know how important a catchy headline is that will be searched, how valuable that is to an audience. What you may not realize is that is a key factor of YouTube search because the things that made you successful in Google, the things that made you successful in social media, that is going to make you successful in YouTube as well. It comes down to titles, descriptions, detailed descriptions, it's a mini blog post, and it comes down to keyword slash tags, and also YouTube thumbnails. I cannot stress enough how important YouTube thumbnails are. Showing up in search is fantastic, but you need people to click a video to be able to watch it. And that means the thumbnail has to be relevant, it has to speak to them, it has to have depth. I tell people to think of thumbnails in the same way you think of a billboard. A billboard that would catch your attention while you're you know, driving down the road at 45 miles an hour, hopefully not looking at your phone, I hope. But if you're in the passenger in a car, how does this billboard get your attention instead of your phone? Well, it has to be catchy, it has to be visually dynamic, and maybe it doesn't force you to read a lot, but just enough. Or maybe it's completely visual and it is a concept. That actually matters. So think about a thumbnail that will get clicked. And there are a lot of free tools. Maybe you're not a Photoshop wizard. You can use things like Canva, I'm sure. Anybody here ever used Canva before? Okay, it's a great tool, right? And it's free. So that matters. You can use tools like Canva, canva.com. It's a great tool that will help you put together YouTube thumbnails. Totally free, I get no money from Canva. Guy Kiyosaki's not writing me checks. Um, but there's so much that you can do with that because if it's visually interesting, it's not only gonna get clicked in YouTube search, when you share that out to Facebook, because social signals and distribution matter, and when you share that out to your Twitter following, or when you share that in your email list, when you're sending it to people in your newsletter, you can put your YouTube videos into your weekly newsletter if you have an email list, and if people know that, maybe they open it more because they're curious about what video is in there. Those things all matter, so having a visually interesting thumbnail that gets clicked, that's important. Having a headline that's relevant. Some people like to do clickbait. I'm all for exciting headlines if they're relevant, but I rely more on headlines that are searchable and topics that are gonna be useful not only this week, but a year from now. That's something that I think you guys should really focus on. It's about this SEO. It's about showing up in search, but not just showing up in search today or this week, showing up in search a year from now and still being relevant. That actually matters. So let's talk a little bit about those titles. How many here think that short titles perform better? Anybody? Few people. How many people think long titles perform better? Okay, not a lot of people willing to commit one way or the other. 
Let me tell you what the value of short catchy headlines are, and let me also then reiterate what the value of long titles are. Short catchy titles might grab somebody's attention and might spark curiosity and get them to click. On the other hand, a long title might actually show up more in search because there might be more keywords or phrases in the title that can trigger a lot more search queries and a lot more questions, especially if it's a how-to category style video or demonstration style video. And so the more opportunities you have in search, the more diverse your audience is, the more opportunities you have to get clicks, etc. So you can play either side of the fence here. You can try and trigger curiosity or you can try and cure, uh, trigger volume of searches. And I'm gonna go ahead and pivot. I'm gonna take a question. I'm gonna do Q&A at the end, but I'll take this question right now. They, they absolutely are, and you want to relate them together because it is a combo. That was a great question. So the question was whether or not it's uh, the keywords in the title or how do those apply and where are they relevant. Well, you want the keywords that you're using or rather a key phrase. For example, in the case of a topic like this, how to grow a YouTube channel, okay? Or how to grow a YouTube channel, five ways to get exposure on YouTube is an example of a long format uh, thing because that gets very specific, right? Because I could go how to grow a YouTube channel, um, five tips for YouTube SEO, which is a very different thing than five ways to get exposure, potentially, right? Because I could be talking with exposure about distribution, I could talk about social media, I could talk about growth hacks, whereas SEO gets very specific. So specificity actually matters and it can filter people and it can also trigger more uh, searches. Now as far as keywords, the same thing that you put in the title of your YouTube video, I recommend that that be also the first thing in the description or a variation of that. A lot of people, they like to put a link to their website. If you're gonna do it, I recommend that be on the third line because the first three lines are what really matter in the description and you want to put a natural sentence that matches the topic in there and use as many keywords as you can in that sentence. Like I would probably put for how to grow a YouTube channel, all right, how to grow a YouTube channel, uh, five tips for getting exposure on YouTube. Uh, growing a YouTube channel is hard, but these things will help you if you're new to the platform, and then maybe a link to my website. And that gives me one, two, three, but what key phrases do I get out of that? Well, I got how to grow a YouTube channel, I got how to get exposure in YouTube, and I got getting started in YouTube. Those are key phrases that I can then put in the keyword tags of my YouTube video that will be searched because those are relevant. And what YouTube and Google see is they see, I see this phrase in the headline, I see this phrase in the description, I see this phrase in the tags, and this is what somebody plugged into the search thing. Oh wait, this is relevant. And then in terms of closed captioning, if I did that, it sees, huh, I entered the video with the title of the video so now I've got check one, check two, check three. These checks in the box actually matter. So that's how it gauges relevancy. And that's where I say that long form is great for search, short form is great for triggering curiosity in a human being, but the growth hack for triggering curiosity in a human being, in my opinion, is a thumbnail. The visual representation of that because a lot of our communication is non-verbal, it's non-written, uh, if we, seeing is believing. So you know, that's what I would say tactically about that. As far as keywords and tools, I actually have uh, some tools that I'm gonna tell you guys about. So one of the first tools that I would recommend is a free one that's in uh, Google itself. Anyone here ever use Google AdWords for paid advertisement? Then you guys already know about the keyword tool in AdWords. But for the rest of you, even without paying any money for Google AdWords to you know, get ads in Google, there's a keyword planner tool and the cool thing about this tool is you can plug your ideas for headlines into this tool and see how many people are searching for this, how much money advertisers are paying for it, and um, also how many people are competing for this keyword. That's key because from a revenue standpoint, if advertisers are paying good money for this, then you might want to do that topic anyway to kind of like siphon some of those you know, YouTube ad dollars because that means something. Uh, the other thing is that if you see that there's, oh, there's a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people in the grand scheme of things, but if you have zero people or you have 100 people, if 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people are searching for this, maybe that's not as much as like 60,000 people a month searching for this, but you gotta start somewhere. 
And if no one's competing for that information, you can dominate. So I definitely think that that matters. You can grow very easily in a niche or build authority in your topic by addressing things that people are searching for, but because the volume is so low for them, they don't think it's worth addressing. You can address those people who are being underserved. You can address an audience that's being underserved. You know what? It might be that somebody has a kid with banana allergies and a lot of people aren't searching for it, but the 2,000 people that are really care about it because that's their kid. And if you can reach them, then that actually matters and you can bring them into your ecosystem. And so by doing this micro-targeting, you actually have a very efficient way to build loyalty, build authenticity, build trust, and get them into your ecosystem and get them to watch your other content, go to your website, join your email list, take your course, whatever you're trying to accomplish here. And so I would definitely look at that. One of the other things about this tool is that, again, it is free and it's provided by Google. And you know that Google is the parent company of YouTube. So it is relative to that. Now, another keyword tool that you can use is called uh, keyword.io. And uh, that's actually the name of the website. And again, this will all be linked up in the slide that you'll get um, you know, after the conference. But keyword.io is great because once you have a phrase and a headline and an idea, it can recommend other variations of that idea so that if someone's not searching for this specific thing and the words in this order, you can get all the other recommended phrases and you know keywords and things that go along with that so that if somebody puts in a variant of that, someone puts in something that's a one-off of that, you can reach those people as well. And it might also give you ideas for, oh, you know what, maybe if I phrase this differently and approach it from another angle in a future video, then I can also reach people. And so that consistency and that add up matters. So I would use the Google AdWords Planner, I would use keyword.io, and then my favorite tool for growth hacking in YouTube is called TubeBuddy. And you can grab that at tubebuddy.com slash awesome. And that's a paid tool. But it's one of the best tools out there because it's not just for YouTube SEO and growth hacking. It also can tell you things like, when's the best time to upload a video for your channel? Because everyone has their own theory about what's the best time to upload, what's the best day of the week. Here's the thing. It's specific to your audience and it's specific to where your viewers are watching. A lot of you here are parents. So uploading a video at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. when people are trying to get kids off the school or trying to drive to work is probably not the most practical thing for your audience but doing it at 3.30, 4.30, 5 o'clock when people are uh, just got people from the bus stop, people are uh, getting back from the office, people are winding down, maybe that's a very practical thing. And again, it might be that your audience, maybe that's the time of day that you're doing that, but what if your audience is on the other side of the country? So it can give you that data and you can figure out, oh, when is the best time for the people who are actually watching my content to actually post and upload for them? So it gives you all these things and you can also look at what competitors are doing. Uh, you can publish directly to Facebook. So that's why I use this tool. It's a productivity tool, but it's also really good for SEO and research because it lets you see in real time when you're plugging in your keywords. Well, wait, is this keyword ranking on the first page of YouTube? Do I want to adjust it? Do I need to change some of these? Oh wait, I have five keywords that are ranking on the first page of YouTube and five that aren't. Maybe I should get rid of those five that aren't and do a variation of the ones that are, and then my video can get more reach. So you can use it for that. And I'd recommend that if you're already making money in your business or you're already making money in YouTube, I think that TubeBuddy is a practical tool for you guys. And it'll be linked up in the uh, PDF presentation, but it's tubebuddy.com slash awesome. And there are two more tools that I wanna recommend before we move on. Rev.com, I talked about closed captioning earlier, right? And about how transcriptions work in YouTube because it's a search engine and how it wants to look at the actual content of your video that way. Because guess what? A human being is not watching your YouTube video and deciding if it's good and to rank it. That's robots, you know? And you know, robots are coming for all of us. That's a real thing. So get used to it. <laughs> With that in mind, you want to appease them. And part of that is if you pay for transcription and closed captioning of your videos, and the good thing about rev.com is it's a dollar per minute for the transcription. So if you're doing a five minute video, an eight minute video, that's not a lot of money, especially if you're only putting that out once or twice a week. And what it does is you get to rank more in search. And also if you're reaching an international audience and community, you can retain them longer. They can watch your videos longer and they'll be more loyal because you know, they're able to follow along accordingly. 
Uh, the other cool thing about that is you can download this transcript. So if you wanted to use this video and you said, you know what, it was so easy to just talk to the camera, but I'd love to make this a blog post. You don't have to retype everything. You can just take that downloaded transcription and you can just edit that. And then all of a sudden, you now have a way to double dip on your content. You can make these videos first for five or 10 minutes and just talk out loud and be conversational. And then take the transcription and get content out of that. So I, I just really feel that's a very practical tool for you guys. So that's rev.com, R-E-V, like Roberto uh, Enrique video. So rev.com. And then the last tool that I'm gonna mention here is uh, Buffer, which you can get from bufferapp.com. Uh, a lot of you, how many of you are already using Buffer or Hootsuite? Nice, then you guys already know how fantastic this is. So what Buffer does is it lets you schedule and automate some of your social media posts. If you uh, have a YouTube video that is already good, maybe you did it two or three weeks ago, but you think that it could get more reach and there's a hashtag in Twitter or something like that that you think is relevant to your audience. You can ride that hashtag, you can schedule this to post in Buffer at a time that you know is advantageous when your audience is present and you can distribute the video that way. And you could set this up to be recurring so that your video always gets distribution. You could also post to Facebook groups and those are all very practical things. So scheduling and automating this at a time when you're also available to take feedback and to reply to comments or to people in Twitter or Facebook, that actually matters because now by scheduling and automating this, you're buying back the time to be human because instead of having to post this thing and copy and paste because you've already set it up and set it up on a timer, you're there to actually give feedback and to respond and to engage. So instead of being less human, this actually gives you an opportunity to be more human. So that matters. So with the last couple of minutes here, let's get into some tactics to compete and let's get into some of the things you need to just get started. Because how many of you are just like, you're lost on where to get started with your YouTube channel and how to just you know jump into this process, anybody? Okay, great. Well, it's actually really easy. So before I get into tactics, I'll just cover some of that. All you need, actually, anybody here have a smartphone? Great. That's all you need. And I know you've heard that before, but here's why that's really practical. For your particular audience, for people uh, that are watching the kind of content that's going to come from you, authenticity matters more than production values. Hearing it from somebody that's real and hearing it in an authentic voice, an authentic tone from somebody who's been there actually matters. If you were going to, if you're a parent that has a child with a disability of any kind, you're not worried about production values. You're worried about hearing what that experience is like and hearing that somebody has your same struggles and has your same concerns and is just as invested in this as you are. That really matters, okay? so. For anybody who's being held back by the fact that, oh, my stuff won't look as good, it won't be as polished, the phone that you have in your pocket is better than what they had when um, they shot uh, Glen Gary Glen, Glen Ross back in the 70s and be better than what they had when they shot Do the Right Thing in the 80s. Your phone is already better than the computers that got us on the moon. It's good enough. <laughs> so with that in mind, you can use your smartphone. For those of you who want to get fancy like me, it's not even that expensive. Uh, the camera that I do my primary YouTube content with in my home office now costs $350. You can get a DSLR camera. You see a lot of people walking around with them today. You can get that for $350, use it with the standard lens. You can get a microphone that you can hook directly into it as a lapel microphone similar to this for 20 bucks or less. The tripod I still shoot on to this day at home is a $30 tripod and that was me being fancy. So that's all it really takes. For $500, if you had it, if you want to get fancy, you can produce exactly the same quality of video that I do, and I have 140,000 subscribers and growing. So if you want to compete and you want your stuff to look as good as some of the best people out there in your niche, it's not going to break the bank to do it. Alternatively, I would recommend taking your smartphone, getting a $15 uh, small tripod and a $20 microphone, and if you feel like you need indoor lighting instead of using natural light, instead of using your backyard or the local park, you can get a um, LED lighting kit, a uh, portable one that takes AA batteries for as little as $26. So for about $50 of investment, you can turn your smartphone into a YouTube studio wherever you are. Uh, you know, um, one of our uh, presidents, Teddy Roosevelt, he said something very interesting. He said, do the best you can with what you have where you are. 
And that's a quote that uh, my good friend Amy Schmatara loves to throw out all the time. And I love to uh, quote it myself because it is the most practical thing in the world. You take what you have, you take the knowledge, the expertise, the experience that you have as an individual, you work with the resources and tools you have, the community of people you have, the people who already believe in you, and you just do the best you can and you grow that. You don't have to be anything that you're not. You absolutely already have what it takes to be successful. You just have to actually put in the work to take that to its fullest potential, to its final conclusion. And you'd be surprised where you end up when you do that. You'd be amazed at how straightforward it actually is.